Hello, it's Sarah, and I am back with the second idea that I had for a holiday project. I'm um, using the same um, pattern packet. It's a Plum Purdy Designs by Renee Mullins. And I am going to, I wrote this down so that I will remember to put it in the description box. Somebody had um, commented that they, I don't know if it's still available. The date from this is 0608. So maybe it's out of print, but I think it's available. But I will put this, um, a link to her page. Also the brushes. I didn't put this in the last video either. I'm working with a CraftSmart um, seven pack of brushes. They've been perfectly fine for these painting projects because I have lots of brushes. I'm a, um, I've been a decorative painter for years, but I use these and they've worked perfectly fine for me. Um, but the main thing I wanted to talk about were these cool vent covers. They're magnetic vent covers um, that I got. I think it, this is a two pack, oh, it's a three pack. I think I only have one left though. No, there's two in here. I've only used one so far. Yeah, there's two more in here. Um, they're eight by 15. So, and what I love about them is they're cuttable. So what I've done is, these I got at either Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, Frost King all season vent cover. So see, it's like a flexible plastic or something. But I cut these apart just into the size of these ornaments. Now, Renee actually uh, designed this piece to go on these wooden ornaments, and she generally has these pieces available in her online store, um, plumperty.com. So, but see, it's like a little wind chime, which is super cute for an ornament. I just didn't buy them, but I thought I can just trace the design onto this magnetic material right and then cut it out out of so here's one that I've already traced so oh the other thing I wanted to mention the it's kind of a slick surface so I did prep the surface with some um, all-purpose sealer I have the Joe Sonia brand there's other brands but something that's gonna give um, some tooth so it says uh, wood, tin, other plastic, other metals, glass, bisque, cards, paper, so that the paint adheres better to it because it is a slick surface. So I don't know if this, like this one's not prepped. This one is. I don't know if you can, yeah, see that? You can see the brush strokes on this one. This one's just a matte finish. The, stop hitting the, guys. Joe, call the dogs because they just bumped my tripod. I don't like it when they do that. So I just traced the pattern onto these and then you can cut it out. I just use my tonic scissors and it cuts just like butter. So I don't need to do this on camera. I'll just cut it out though. What the heck? I'm almost there. Um, but it makes such a cute little magnet. It's kind of like the stuff that, I don't know, I think my, um, my vet has these as his calling card, you know, so you can just stick it up on the fridge if you ever need to call them. Um, sometimes realtors have them that they make their calling cards out of, so, um, I, I was looking, I wanted to make magnets and probably found it on YouTube that someone had used this material and it's like a magnetic vent cover that you would cover your like um, heat vents up with maybe I don't know why you would want to do that but anyway and there you go so now you have a little magnetic surface that you can paint I already started painting this I have a couple of cat lovers in the family that I already did one of my lampshades with it with the little kitty cat on it and then I'm just going to do a little, I did the, um, the cardinals, so this one's already done. And I just put my name on it. I don't always put the year, but it is nice when you do projects to put the year because then you can see how you've improved over the years. Um, sometimes for Christmas ones, I don't like to put the year because then I can give it the next year, the next year, like if I didn't give it to anyone that year. Anyway, 
So all I'm going to share with you today is some of the finishing up on this one because I did, I figured I've done a painting tutorial lately. Um, I'm just going to share a little bit of floating, a little refresher of floating. I'm going to go around everything and um, just around the outside edge with some Payne's Gray. Just because I have that in my stash. I'm pretty sure this is Payne's Gray, yeah. And to float, I use an angle brush, I corner load, and then I blend it out on my palette paper, which this is like a, a, a glossy surface so that it, it slides. But a float is basically loading your brush in such a way that the color goes from dark to mid to light to middle, or you know, it graduates in color down until you get to water. And you only want water on this side of the brush. And that way you can, um, create depth in your project and all I'm doing with this is just going around the outside edge so this is nothing major but it'll just give a little frame to the project and, um, and then I'm going to add a little bit of snow to um, Top, sorry, I can't, I, I can do that. It's so meditative for me. I just love it. Um, I think I'm going to go, I'm um, going to switch to my little bit smaller brush. So yeah, so th that wasn't the brush that I used from the pack. Where is my one that I used from the pack? This one. There's a 3 8 inch angle brush in that pack that I mentioned. And it works just fine. So you're just corner loading. You don't want too much water, just enough water. And if you have too much water on your brush, like if you see too many bubbles in your, right here where you, so you just blot, come back over, and pick up what's here on the, um, on your palette paper. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this color along the branch. And then we're done pretty much. You could go crazy, but all you really needed was a little, just a frame around it. And then I'm going to add some snow to the um, roof with white. So along this little roof. Uh, I don't know if it would be there, but it looks cute. Anywhere you want, really. There's a little bit of snow in these birdhouse holes. I put some snow. Let's go with more snow on the branches. And I just like wiggle my brush so that you create thick and thin little, you know, let your hand be shaky. Because snow doesn't just fall evenly sometimes. It, the wind's blowing, so you have variations in how it lands and how it accumulates. And then I already put some up along this little twig and that twig. You can put it wherever you want. Um, I mean, it might even be on his head. She, her design doesn't have it anywhere else. And I think we're pretty much done after that. Just making a little more thick there. Um, Pretty much, I think that's it. And if you wanted to, you could come in with the black pen like she had, like I had you do on here. I went around some things to um, just make them show up a little bit better. And then I did come in with some um, glitter and add that. So that's it. I just wanted to share, this was the other um, little project that I decided to do trying to find a clean paper to make it look spiffy so anywho these are super cute I mean you could put little snowflakes all around like I did on the cardinal as well it might have stopped snowing in this one but that's it all right you guys so that's just a quick video to show you um, another surface that you can use to create any type of little image that you want to put on there just words, whatever. You can use stamps, patterns, whatever you have, all right? 
The next thing I want to do is I, I'm going to do some alcohol ink. I went and got, um, I found another artist and I'm going to be watching lots of videos because I want to create these beautiful paintings that they do. So I got a few more colors. I got the palette from Tim Holtz and um, I'll be back. I'm going to watch a few more videos and then I'm going to play with you guys. Maybe I'll do a live and we'll play with alcohol ink. All right? So that's it. Thanks for watching.